Greetings in the name of the Most High. Yes, we're, uh, um, I put a, uh, accessory on the Zoom, a, a sock, because it was important, you know, to keep going, as it were, and, uh, again, it's the best roving mic available, and any more sensitive, and all you would hear is clicks and pops. I have it in journalist mode. That means that... Let me just get my preparation. I've been all, since the wee hours, using a new mic in the studio, a tube mic by S... It's called the uh, Gemini 2. And, uh, gosh, it's really great for vocals but it's not as good as my other mic that I have for for speaking and both are kind of heavy one broke one of the stands you have to have a heavy stand the thing is enormous it's uh you know it's like a football it's got a t- you know tube in it and it's got a little amplifier you plug it into and then it goes into the uh preamp anyway um yeah, I tested it out on some vocal tracks yesterday, and I'm, it makes me sound like a, a genius. Just imagine, you know, it seriously does. Um, in fact, I would say that the next recording you hear of me, you'll be kind of surprised at the vocals. Uh, I guess what the tube does is it provides a warm feeling. Uh, and... The other one is so good for voice, for spoken word. It's a Neumann. Um, for those of you who know, it's a... Well, basically, it was made as a vocal mic. It's not, no, it's not the most expensive mic or anything like that, but it was made as a vocal mic and particularly good with use of a tube preamp, which is recommended because it's very clinical in a way, but it also has a warm kind of sound. Um, but what it's really, it, it's kind of unforgiving on vocals, even with a tube preamp, which is supposed to really warm it up. Great with spoken word. I mean, fantastic. So right now I have the other one in there for spoken word and I have it tweaked in a way that it's fine, but really what it is, is great for singing. And I found that with these mics and now we have this one, the zoom, with these mics, you have different ones for different things. So I got a lot of things I got to talk about today. A lot of uh, just, you know, we're still dealing with the aftermath in a way. There's still a lot of trauma out there of people that are wondering what the economy will be like, what they will be like, what the world will look like not too far from now. And the the thing is, is that the you know and you knew the consequences of uh the election would be eventually uh an economic collapse which has been planned for a long time it's their way of resetting recalibrating the economy after they've built it for all they can get out of it but yes they're going to do that and the I want to readdress this because I got an email that was from someone who had been a listener, had trouble with, you know, had got some help, but not a believer, you know. This is a person who's not a believer but was a listener. And I think that's part of the problem, not being a, not a believer, but not someone who's been taken into the spirit. Someone who goes by logic. And they were jumping all over me for saying about uh, blacks, Hispanics, and others, but certain groups, certain like ethnic groups, cultural groups, voting for entitlements, voting for gimme stuff. And you can add to that most of the middle class as well, because you saw the results of the election. America is, um, (laughs) well, God bless the Chinese. (laughs) Um, no, America is not 
any longer in, you know, and I don't want to really get into a political thing, but they took issue with what I said about blacks and Hispanics voting for overwhelmingly for entitlements where they voted for Obama. So, and how they don't realize, you know, obviously that their vote is going to lead to poverty. Just like in Venezuela, they don't believe that. Just like in Cuba, they don't believe that. They, they like their dictators. They like the Santa Claus. And um, this is true in most like third world countries where there are dictators. Same mentality is what we have here. And those, what I said was basically that kind of voting and that kind of mentality is a vote for poverty. It leads to poverty. And then this person went on to say about how people that got food stamps are able to live where they would starve to death and they're getting a hand, uh, hand up, not a hand out. And Obama's policies are awesome. And that mine are backwards and from like old fashioned and worn out. <laughs> and I just, I, I didn't, you know, because I don't want to get into any arguments with people. I, 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 don't, I don't like emails because most of them like this one are very ignorant. And they think they're smart and they think they know the facts and they really don't. So there's no way to explain to a person like this what the consequences are of this. Really, it's a spiritual condition. What the consequences are of the dictatorial state of voting for Santa Claus. And, you know, and, you know, to the person's credit, they're looking at it from the ground and people need their benefits or they wouldn't eat. And I understand that. No one should starve in this country, especially that the fact that it's going on right now is a travesty and there's blame. You know, you can't just say that the Democrats have the solution because they've been the the uh, they've been the um, sort of purveyors of the ghetto from the day one, because anyone that's going to give stuff out is going to keep increasing the poverty base. Until the world is just, you know, one big tin pot ghetto dictatorship. And that's where it leads. I can't, you know, I didn't invent it. I didn't make it happen. I'm simply reporting a fact. And it's sorry if facts offend. If facts offend people, but I guess in this country they really do. So let me just straighten this out. Number one, progressive ideas go back to the beginning of time and are the most old-fashioned ideas in the world. You want power, you promise stuff to the little people, they'll put you in power, and then you keep them there. And that is 1930s, Nazi Germany, Stalinist Russia, Maoist China, Cuba, South America, and the world. Socialism everywhere it has been tried, has failed ultimately because the state, like a tick, grows bigger and bigger and they do not provide economic wealth for people to be employed, etc. That's why Russia collapsed. My ideas are not old. They, compared to the world, they are very new. And most people can't comprehend them. Because the idea of freedom and free markets and a rising population wealth-wise, which we've seen, except for the facts that the other side, except the, when the people who are against that came against it through voting and put a kibosh on profits. Now, let me explain what's going to happen due to this voting and due to this ignorance that I, like these emails I got. What's going to happen is that the companies will no longer employ people. So they're already, my prediction's already coming true, not yours. Mine, yes. I predicted that they would pull the entitlements once they got their power. And yes, in Wisconsin, they're pulling food stamps. I kid you not, look it up. They are pulling food stamps for families, or they're not pulling them 
completely. They're reducing them already. It's how long after the election? I made this prediction confirmed in Wisconsin, folks. So I got credibility here. I'll stand on that. What I predicted will happen nationwide. So the people voting for these entitlements, these food stamps, will eventually be given, you know, a ticket to get in line at a, at a, at a soup kitchen, along with everybody else. That's not acceptable in this country. And all, you know, we could have done better. The point I'm trying to make is, and I know I don't believe the country's coming back or anything like that. It's over. Just understand, where I was coming from is a new idea. An idea that had not been used in the world since time began. And there is proof of that. Just research the Roman civilization. Research all the civilizations to the beginning of time, and you'll see that I'm right. The Constitution, Declaration of Independence and all that was a new idea. Socialism, progressivism is an old idea. It's a trick as old as time. And they're bringing it in like this is what's happening and any other kind of conservative values or values of, which is bizarre because in the world it wouldn't be conservative. The things I talk about would be progressive. Technically, that would be the proper word. But those ideas of free markets and of free people with the government off their back with no king or dictator to pay. Um, I.e. tyranny. Those ideas aren't in vogue. Today we want to go back to the old failed policies of South America dictators in America to reduce America to a third world country, and that's the new I cool idea in Hollywood. Give me a break. Um, I'm sorry about your ignorance, but you need to start educating yourself at some point in your life. And that goes for the rest of you who, uh, no, no, I agree, I agree with you. You folks who wrote me and said that Z socialism is it, it's going to be the law of the land. Get used to it. I'm like, you're right. No, no, you're right. That's, that's the old, as old as time, and it never worked. It creates poverty. And you're right. That will be the law of the land. But my ideas are not antiquated. They are new. They are progressive, not really even conservative compared to the world. Conservatism is dictatorships, tyranny, in, I mean, in terms of world history. In other words, the way things have been, the status quo has been, i.e. conservative, status quo has been dictatorships, poverty, serfdom, slavery from day one, which is all this is. That's all California has become. And it's going to go further. No, I'm done with America. You don't understand. I could renounce my citizenship today. I would do it. I want nothing more to do with this country or these people. I like to just be as far away from those um, kinds of people who have... No, I, I'd love to help them. Sure, we can feed them. I'm all for feeding them. Give them water. And then they'll have to be fed another day. And then another day. And then forever. And if I did that in mass, I too would have power. They'd cheer me as I walk down the street. I'd be Santa Claus. I'd give them things. I really care about them. Yeah, like the Medellin cartel. Big drug dealer bucks up, comes down the street and throws the crumbs out. Gets the power. They protect him. That's what it is. That's nothing new, folks. That is old. That's why... People struggled to come to this country and fought for it because they didn't want that anymore. That Because that was the old ways. Now they're back. And these people, these idiots, in Hollywood, especially in other places, in D.C. and wherever the whole thing is, in the Northeast, Northwest, they're calling this 
you know, get being right with history and being on the right side of the equation. Um, <laughs> and I told you what they usually do is they kill all the, all you people that believe that way are true believers and you're slated for death. What they do is once they get their way and there's disappointment amongst their own who really believed in this and realized they've been duped, those are the people, the true believers who are purged in the end, usually, not in the end, but purged first. The useful idiots are usually killed first in a, if, if it ever goes to a uh, communist revolution takeover, which is what they want to do, but they're trying to do it in a soft way so that the frog is boiled. Um, the frog is boiled and didn't even know he's dead. And that's what these people are fostering in. So now let me be very fair. What I just said is the truth. And if you don't like it, instead of trying to waste your time emailing me, why don't you go out and research what I said? And stop, you know, sending me propaganda and false information. And that would be a great, great thing for you. You know, but I can't do it for you. You know, I can't do it for you. I can't, you know, insulting me is not going to um, solve your problem of ignorance. That being said, I am not promoting any party. I'm not promoting conservatism, liberalism, communism, capitalism. I mean, myself personally, I believe in free markets. So I guess I'm a capitalist in the sense that I believe you should take your wares to the markets and sell them or whatever, innovate, including your labor, your skills, and make the best deal you can get. But that, I've, I've believed in that because, oh no, I was not indoctrinated. <laughs> That's another uh, total, well, there just can't be any more contact in this situation. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? When people go that way and they're brainwashed, they call you brainwashed. They're brainwashed. No, but you're the one that's indoctrinated, even though they're just basically like a parrot parroting the talking points of the left. Beep, 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 beep. And everything they say in the campaign, then they're spouting back to you. So, um, sorry, you know, I've, uh, no, I was nice. I wrote a nice you know, email back. And, you know, I agree with the idea that we should have no one starving this country. And I believe in, you know, it's just there's a difference on uh, how you get there. But to call freedom old-fashioned, free markets antiquated, tyranny and slavery and dictatorships the new thing. Um, I, I don't see, I don't even see how any logical thinking person could even get to that point. But that, I guess you can if you listen to propagandists long enough, you too will be spouting the party line. But so I had that kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, so you don't even want to hear the other side um, of the argument that where your philosophy leads basically is tragedy. And you will see it like in Wisconsin start to spread out around the world. You'll see, as I predict, and let me just make these predictions and you'll just go by these. The, um, the whole fiscal cliff argument and trying to solve the deficit will fail in Washington. Will fail in Washington. What's going to be is this. It's going to fail. They're not going to get it done. It's going to be a lot of gridlock, a lot of blame going around. But even if they were all in agreement and they were all progressive liberal communists, even if that was the case, and they voted to take all the money away from everyone who had money, and that they would have it and dole out food stamps, uh, there be, meaning no new wealth created, no jobs, no nothing, just the big daddy government. Okay. Let's say they got their way and did that. There would still be a financial collapse. Total. So this idea that there's a fiscal cliff coming up in January, whatever, is BS. Don't even believe it. The fiscal cliff can't be avoided no matter what they do. No matter what they do, it's over. 
And um, the smart money knows that. That's why the companies are laying people off. Because they're not laying people off because, I mean, they can say Obamacare, and that's a horrible policy that will cause massive unemployment, massive, uh, massive unemployment, okay? Massive failure. Um, but, but, and that's an old idea. I mean, they, a new idea is this. Let's vote for failure. Let's, let's make sure all the companies in California leave. So we'll force Obamacare and then force unbelievable taxes on all the wealthy, and then we'll soak them, and then we'll get our own. Well, California still hasn't balanced the budget. Even after passing a brand new tax, they just pa- passed. Highest taxes in the world, California. It, no, they're as high as France, if you take it across the board. Highest sales tax in the world. And they can't balance their budget because their policies will lead to tanks on Wilshire Boulevard, to the military being called in, and people being told uh, during the food riots to stand down and get in line. But it, again, own it because you caused it. Those of you who voted that way or indoctrinated that way, you caused it. So, now my views would be more libertarian because I'm for legalizing drugs, which makes me on the outs with conservatives, uh, limiting the military to a lot more uh, protection of the sovereign of the U.S., not open the borders and everything's everything and everything bleeds and everything else. Canada doesn't want that, by the way. Canada's going to erect a border so we can't get over there because they're doing a lot better than the United States because they cut their spending, cut their deficits, cut the entitlements, shored up their banks, and um, shored up their dollar, the Canadian dollar, their currency, And now they're kind of like, they learned the the secret of success. And they don't want people coming up there. So there you go. We could have done that, but we won't. Because there's too many ignorant people in this country. That's why I've called it over for America, due to ignorance. You know, tough love, baby. You know, if you can't see that your ideas are a failure... You know, don't blame me. I refuse to take any more of these stupid... You know, if you're going to... If someone would have a serious discussion, no one has been able to yet, about, um, you know, take one way and then another way and see where it leads. Now, let's go to the spiritual aspect. No, that's why I don't really take emails, because I, they're like distractions, and usually when there's some sort of personal attack or whatever, it's... It's never even about the facts. It's just that they want to, it's just that you offend them and they want to strike back in some way. And I just, I'm so bored with that. I mean, it's just such a waste of time that, you know, those of you who are, you know, wanting earnest and you want to send an email, you're, you're suffering because of the people that just want to snipe and be stupid. Waste, I mean, it's like a waste of time of your waste of your life. You know, if you don't agree with someone, just move on. You know, if you don't agree with something that's being said in a podcast, just move on. You know? Anyway, hopefully that'll be the, my filtering system will keep all that out from here on out and I won't have to deal with it. But hey, I did at least give the, you know, I mean, because I had several emails touting the, the, benefits and beauty of socialism and how I'm not only I'm wrong to fight because I will lose is kind of the spirit. It's going to be global acceptance. No, I already accept it. I'm already, you know, verbally stated that the U.S. is bankrupt and finished. It's no longer a country. I'm no longer a citizen of it. I'm, I'm in the aftermath. When I stated that, I meant it. And it will come to pass in the mind of all, I predict. All. And uh, it's okay. I, you know, look, people, this has been a pattern in human history. And my, the real reason all this happens isn't because people are just stupid, which it would look like on the surface. But it's because people have no... Um, 
no knowledge of the truth. That's why I get these ignorant emails. They put that first like their religion, but they don't agree that there's a maker and it's not really even about them. You know, in their mind, it's all about them and all about, you know, day-to-day living and they're their own God. But that's just not true. It's not about us. Waking up, real, you realize it's not about you. It's not about you at all. It's not about whether you have a career or not or whether you do this or not or whether you do that or not. It doesn't matter. Nothing you do really matters. Nothing I do matters. It's acknowledging and, and realizing the need to connect with him who made us, it who made us, if you like, the Alpha and the Omega, and the mystery of creation, the mystery of God, the mystery of our purpose and being here. And yes, there are millions of religions who will control and brainwash you into being their little slave, and I have exposed that. Anyone that's in the church, any church, is being controlled and being handled by handlers and controllers, and, you know, it's the church is completely satanic. Whether you take the Protestant, Catholic, any denomination, any 501c3 church is satanic. And they're, they're run that way, and there's no exception to that. Proved over and over again here on the Zeph Report, no one's ever challenged it because they know in a debate, they would be crushed. They could not withstand questions about what happened at youth group and what you know they do to people and satanic ritual abuse and and yeah the whole thing unraveling which turns out to be a satanic pedophile network cabal worldwide that controls everything that's why we've got to get off the political off um well the political is good in a sense because it was showed the struggle uh showed this in the end let's just let's stipulate this and I'll just do this like from here on out, I have to be like I'm in a court of law. That's fine. I enjoy that challenge. Um, we'll stipulate this. That man globally cannot solve his problems. Okay? I think I'm, um, I've, last I've checked the news, I'm 100% accurate. But if you know of any country, no, even Canada, yes, Canada has serious problems as well. Um, and cannot solve all her problems now. Just they've made headway with the economy, and hopefully they'll get a, a good run out of it before the... No, it won't be long before the other people come in to try to ruin it and bring in their thing under progressivism, socialism, leftism, liberalism, whatever. But what they're going to end up doing is limiting the rights of everybody. Free speech out the window, that's liberalism. Can't say this or that. That means you're racist, blah, blah, blah. All that PC stuff, that comes from them. No freedom, total intolerance, and they're the total racists. Complete racist. Everyone I know on the left, for the exception of a few that don't get into it so much, but most, I'll just say most people I've talked to, who throw around racial epithet like you're a racist. I can, well, let me just not get in trouble by saying any or all or some or few Let's not go into a numbers thing. Let's just say many, okay? Many would be a fair word. Um, They're intolerant completely of anyone else's ideas. If you don't vote for Obama, they'll jump on you and call you all these names. If you, you know, they'll call you racist and all that stuff because the left has always been. They're They're the slave owners of the South. They're the ones who would fought to keep slavery, fought to keep racism. They're the ones who invented it. And now they've got a trick where they blame the other people the, uh, for being racist, harboring, you know, thus by pointing your finger at the other guy, you hide yourself. And so that's what they've been able to do is hide. They don't fool me. They are the racist. They're totally intolerant. If you had voted for Romney, and Romney doesn't get a pass in my book either, but see, none, no one does. No politician, because it's all, you know, an old boy network. But here's the deal. If you had voted for Romney, you were called, on Twitter at least, you know, and publicly, you're called anti-gay. That anyone who votes, oh yeah, completely homophobic, uh, racist. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. 
they managed to do a trick because I have never seen so much intolerance and especially these emails um, and racism, intolerance, no creative thought, slave mentality, speaking talking points rather than facts and ignorance on display in my life. I would never want to be hooked up with that. Um, okay, and yeah, and anyone who doesn't see it the way that they see it wants people to starve to death and wants to pollute the environment and, and every evil that you can think of, and that's been very successful. That's how they win elections, and I predict by slander, trickery, sorcery, the, what you call the left will finish the takeover for their... It, but it's, you have to understand, it's an international movement. It's a globalist movement that will eventually um, be overtly the rulers of the United States. Now, the defeat of the United States has come and gone. Without a whimper, the USA died. So, I don't really care... Um, you know, when I hear their talking points and they want to tout this or that, I just know what's going to happen. I just, I'm a, in the prophetic, okay? I come from the spiritual side of things. My comments on the economy or that from my gleaning of the Bible that God, God is more for freedom than he is for slavery, that, that's what I got from the Bible. You know, and all my talking against socialism, which has failed every time it's been tried, communism and all that, I have been trying to, to fight a last minute. I mean, I had Brother Thomas on. Brother Thomas, the visionary, the seer, the, 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 the prophetic voice. And he talked about this, I don't know, for the last few years, that this would come. I remember talking to him in 2005, I think. And he told us all about the communist situation and that the purge was on and they will be successful. Well, Brother Thomas, they have been successful, and it's over. And you are 100% right. But I told you, even though I believed you were right, the Lord's leading me to try to, you know, speak about it in a way to educate people, to try to, you know, maybe bring some sense before the country's lost. I felt one more good effort, because I benefited from being here. You know, I also was tortured for being around Satanists and not really wanting to uh, go that way because that's t total stupidity on steroids. People that become Satanists or bow down to the Satanic, they go, well, you know, I had to eat. Well, it's the same thing. You know, okay, yeah, I had to eat. I couldn't take it. I was going to commit suicide, but this was my only way out. Give me a break. You just didn't want to go through the persecution that one goes through for doing the right thing. You just didn't want to go through the persecution for, for example, all the Satanists and all the, you know, that's why the, the side that owns America now, they voted God out of their platform and cheered it. If you don't know the Lord, you're ignorant to begin with. Period. There is just no other way to look at it. And the things that come out of people's mouths that have a disdain for the Lord are vanities, flatteries, platitudes, attempt to control you, attempt to control other people. It's just all mono on mono idiocy. There's no reason there. The only reason they have is basically their bellies, their sex organs. That's about all their reason that they have. That's it. Their beauty, their lawsuit, their shoes, their quaff, whatever. That's all they think about. You know, and, um, you know, though. So there's a lot more to it than that. Those who t believe in God, and there are, and believe me, I know there are some in California because I know them. Um, they tend to have real compassion for other people. They tend to quietly jump in and feed and clothe people without being told that they, they should do it collectively so they can be on display as being a good guy. Uh, 
These are people that um, take ostracization and persecution, meaning, you know, they're not going to be going to the cool party with the cool progressive new people with the new ideas, the future. There's this uh, actor, Russell Crowe, great actor, but, you know, an airhead mentally. Anyway, he actually (laughs) said that, I can't believe there, you know, he couldn't believe there was any opposition against Obama. He goes, Obama's the future. <laughs> like, okay. So, so what you're saying, uh, Mr. Crow, is Saul Alinsky is the future. Um, Marx is the future. Rules for radicals is the future. And, you know, they're, 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 that's what I'm talking about. I know, you know, the whole thing they say about actors being dumb, but uh, not all. <laughs> Obviously, not all musicians are dumb. Like, creative people are dumb because they they need to be handled and coddled. So, that's pretty dumb. To have the talent to be able to make your own way, then give it all all the power over to other people over your life. But to say that Obama's the future, in disdain for anyone who wants freedom, free markets, whatever... You know, that, that, that is the future. What that shows me is the future is 1984. The future is Al- Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. The future is tyranny. That's basically what it translates into. What can I say? How can I, you know, I heard the comment. There was a, like a, it was a Twitter comment. I saw it. You know, no, I don't think... All people are as dumb as that, but, I, but there's a guy that, you know, drank the Kool-Aid. He's done really well by saying yes. Like, if you want to work in Hollywood, for example, you had better have liberal politics on your brain and your tongue and fake it. If you don't believe it, you're going to have to publicly state it or you won't work or you'll be labeled a racist, a homophobe, whatever. If you have any independent, I mean, I, my ideas are more libertarian, okay, but that, too, is labeled the same way. Then you're, you know, cold and you don't care. And all that, of course, is lies. Lie, 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 lie. Why? Because it's a groupthink mentality is why. Because the groupthink says so. And that's how the group stays in power. Lie, 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 lie. But if it's in a collective, in a group, who's to know any better? Vilify your opponent, Saul Alinsky says, destroy your opponent by any means necessary. Destroy any thought or hope of ever being like that. Make it a, being a social pariah, being someone with those ideas. Vilify those ideas so that anyone that has them, the group will attack. And then the latest is, Those ideas are (laughs) old-fashioned, which is completely backwards from the truth. The thing that doesn't succeed in the world and hasn't has been freedom, has been free markets, has been cooperation, because in humanity, you have a human condition. And if people give up this notion that they're beholden to a creator, and they themselves are their own gods, and there is no creator, then you're going to have um, blood running through the streets at some point. And that's where this is all leading. And the people engaged will blame others and say, if, it was, if they weren't here, there wouldn't be blood running through the streets. If they weren't here, everyone would be prosperous. If we just go with the new age liberal philosophy of do what thou wilt, which is nothing new, it's old. It's as old as the serpent in the garden. It's do what thou wilt, um, which basically posits a, an elite, a small elite of celebrity, which we have here. No middle class, really, and ultimately a world of sycophants, slaves, mind control victims touting the party line. And that's all I've been saying. I mean, that's what I've been saying for a long time. And 
Now, though, the difference is, and this is really, you know, kind of important for those people that want to quibble. Now, the difference is you can have your elections. You are you, meaning America. You can have your debates. You can have your, uh, you know, justifications. You can exist by calling everybody else names that thinks differently. Again, no free thinking allowed. And uh, I don't care. You know, I left. And um, because I recognized and I realized the truth of it, that there are not enough people here to sway it, to bring it. In, in other words, it's past the point of no return. And the end is sad. All I've said is what it would take to make people prosperous and successful in general, you know, with, and, and, but it's never going to be seen. So there's no point for me to go on about moral philosophy, economic philosophy, uh, political philosophy, as I've done, as I've gleaned it from the Bible. Because um, it's not understood. I mean, you understand it, those of you who have been those of you who are who you are, you understand it and you agree. Um, in your own lives, you're having the same difficulty. You're, you know, more and more. Um, the kids, oh yes, your kids are telling you you're, you're backwards. They've got the way. I remember in the sh- series V. Remember V? Well, they had a new series. Remember how the kid of the, the oh gosh, I forget what she was. She was like what, an FBI agent? And her kid becomes a true sycophant of the lizards. He dresses up in the uniform, he basically does their bidding, and he thinks he's the future. And basically, he's tyranny, he represents tyranny. He represents Nazism. He represents, you know, um, the KGB. He's like that, the Stasi. And that's where liberalism leads. It leads to that, it leads to tyranny. But, you know, leftism, liberalism, communism... Satanism, which is basically Satan's philosophies, the first thing of which is to get rid of God, you know, because God's an antiquated, old-fashioned idea. People that don't know the Lord, Lord's a dynamic, living thing. He's with us. He's in, he gets me up at this hour to speak the truth, even about things like this, you know, and um, you know the idea of. There's another thing that needs to be said. That is, if you all leave them, that terrifies them. To not have you to blame would be a terrifying, horrible thing. Well, you don't have me to worry about. I'm, you, you, you win. You have it. It's yours. Okay? I'm just simply now predicting all the outcomes. But you see, without others to rail against, without another side, um, if they were just in their own city without anyone else, any opposition, to, that would be a terrifying thing for them because they need you to rail against. I am saying that the separation the Lord does is really separates us from all of it. And that offends them. There's nothing that offends them more than not having an opponent, than the idea that people would want to leave them and say, you can have your cities, you can have L.A., you can have San Francisco, you can have your cities. Go ahead. We're just gone. And they will, as they have over the ages, try to find you, go there, infiltrate you, and then bash you with those ideas again. You could go to a remote island somewhere, you know, and just say, you know, enough is enough. You know, I did the best I could, and no one's listening, so goodbye. And they'll come and find you and try, try to find a way to regulate you. Case in point, Obama has put through some, I don't know, thousands and thousands of regulations since he got the dictatorial powers. These regulations are completely 
um, killing of all, you know, the design to destroy the economy, and they will. But there are thousands, there are hundreds a day, it seems. What is it, 70 a day of new regulations? 70 a day of new regulations. Restricting everything and everyone. I mean, they're going to, look, if they could have their way, you would not be allowed on any state parks. You would not be allowed to have any, they would regulate how much food you could have on hand. They would regulate how much money you could make. They would get your paycheck and dole it out to you. That's, they would have a single payer system for healthcare. There'd be no debate about companies because they would be all out of business. They've already confiscated 1.6 million acres in uh, the West, in Colorado, Utah, various places where Obama signed an executive order on day two to not drill after saying he's the big drilling president, that he's got more drilling going on than anywhere. He just took 1.6 million acres offline and put all those people out of work. And this was natural gas, shale, oil, and gas. People don't realize there's, you know, all these things come uh, from drilling. And they're in, you know, in no way is it impacting in any negative way, but it would make us energy independent. No, he has done that in the last few days. He took 1.6 million acres offline, which puts out of work thousands and thousands of people. And it goes on from there. Um, it's literally unbelievable. This is the worst. Well, it's like having Stalin as your president. It's like having Adolf Hitler as the president. And it's, it's on that level. It's like having Castro as the president. And the only reason they take it offline is because they don't want America to prosper. The whole idea is to take it down. $10 a gallon gas, force them into electric, whatever. All the companies will therefore leave. They will have to leave. The oil companies out of business, they will have to leave. That's okay with them. They want to take over all those industries, you know, and regulate and regulate. In other words, no freedom, tyranny, regulation, rules, uh, interstate uh, checkpoints. I predicted right here. And in a leftist regime, that's what you get. They're, they're all over the country now. They're, they're at, uh, for example, when you go into, um, well, they're, they're not just interstate, they're, they're on highways in various places, you know, not in the open, not publicized yet. But the prediction I made was there would be interstate checkpoints, like in Stasi, Eastern Germany, checkpoints to check to see that you're in order. And if you want to go through faster, you'll have to have a chip just like cars have a chip, you know how trucks have a chip, and they can go through, they don't have to stop and get weighed. They're going to use that technology to make sure so people can buy and sell. And if you look at Revelation 13, you will see that the Bible prophesied this so many, so long ago, that people will have to have a chip in order to do commerce and do business. That was part of the Antichrist establishment. Now, you ask, why is this all happening? Because it's a global, a global uh, push and purge to bring about the religion of Lucifer. See, they don't believe in no God. They have a God, it's Lucifer, but they say they're atheists, but that's not true. And they say that if we could just get rid of them, any who oppose, we could all be connected and we'll all prosper just like you prosper when you sell out to the other side, you get a pop, right? But then you find out that you're, you don't get another pop until you do something bad to someone else. Then by doing bad things, you get more pops, and that's how people become celebrities. Unfortunately, whether it's in any field, whatever. Or at the very least, you've got to be one of us and connected to the family of Lucifer, the family of the world, the world family, which all the churches are, no problem, all the religions are, so that you can prosper, so that you can, um, and the, the, the objection is, you mean you'd, you'd, you'd be objecting of that, of putting food on your table, and I'd say, who told you Lucifer was your provider? Who told you Satan was your provider? Where did you get this cockamamie idea in your head? Why did you get that idea? 
But now, anyone that threatens that idea, and especially when you're in institutions, they will target you for death. They will target you to be a targeted individual if you disagree in bowing down to their God. Which means, let me translate that, it means bowing down to them and taking your place in the slave, hierarchical, luciferic order of the world that's not spoken and doesn't exist in order to not be targeted, in order to not be harassed, in order to um, be able to have a seat at the table, be able to be somebody, get a Nobel Prize, be, you know, get a chance to compete on the, on, the, on the field. You won't get that unless you're part of their family. If you're part of their family, you're anathema to God. But then again, they provide church for you so you feel like you are saved. But it's all a lie. Hallelujah. There's the truth. There it is. Ugly as it may be to some of you, that's the truth. A lot of you who are, say you're targeted individuals who are leftists, you think somehow it's the Bush uh, dynasty that's, and their secret police that's targeting you. No. It's a spiritual battle, you idiot. And if you can't see that by now, I don't, maybe there's no hope for you. You want to keep blaming one side or another and playing Hegelian dialectics with yourself, you might as well just go ahead and conscript yourself into slavery for the rest of your life because you're already a slave, but you're saying you're targeted because the other side is targeting you. Because you have the wrong political idea or something. That's not why people are targeted. They're targeted for supernatural, spiritual, you know, higher dimensional reasons. And in these other dimensions are the ones that rule over the earth. They're principalities of wickedness in high places, and they rule over man. And they demand conformity to that which is the world. And if people are not connected to the world or disconnected, they try to say, well, those are like Jared Lee Loeffner or people that shoot up places. They're not connected. Well, the last one we had in Colorado, um, uh, Holmes, the Batman killer, uh, he was connected. Very well, thank you very much. So, kind of blows their theory. But, uh, you know, I told you they would start feeding on themselves, didn't I? I told you they'll start shooting each other in the end because, you know, um, the population of lambs, i.e. not connected, but true lambs are really those connected to Jesus Christ. He comes into your life. He changes you. He lives in you as the Holy Spirit. He gives you sound mind. He gives you the ability to speak about these ideas in a very cogent way, in a way that, that petty arguments can't put them down, can't stop it. You can't stop the truth. Those of you who've written me who want the truth, you can't stop the truth. I'm just a vessel for the truth. I am not a god in myself. Anything that I get that's good to say, to speak, comes from him, the creator who made heaven and earth and everything in it. He, his spirit, speaks truth. If, if I was left to my own devices, I would speak opinion only. And everything I've spoken here today is certainly not opinion, but objective. Even though you may say it's opinion, you would be incorrect. My own opinion, if left to my own devices, I would probably... Just focus on conspiracy theory. I would focus on, uh, if it was just left to my opinion, it would be conspiracy theory. It would be uh, um, my own idea of what's fair, what's right and wrong, rather than taking it from the word of God. It would be my own ideas of what I thought was right was wrong. Um, you know, I'd probably go with the trends as well. I'd be duped by uh, communism, socialism, all that stuff. I'd be cool. I'd probably do very well as a uh, music producer in terms of, uh, you know, mixing the big acts and whatnot. And I'd have my space, my slot. So long as I never thought anything outside the box, they would leave me alone. So what are you going to do? I remember this one celebrity came to look at a house I had in L.A. to sell. And... Uh, 
I won't say what field it was in, in the music field, and a very famous fellow. And, uh, and he came with his wife. And I was just kind of in the another room. You know, I was busy doing what I was doing. So I said to, uh, I think it was Trish, uh, go ahead and show him around. I don't really have time. And the wife got so mad. She was just so mad. It's like, who do you think you are? You know, not bowing to. She wanted me to bow down to her husband. And I'm like, screw you, lady. If you want the house, take it. If not, get out of here. I don't care about you and your stupid husband. Grew up around celebrities, way bigger than you. Went to school with them. Grew up with them. It's nothing to me. Just human beings. I'm busy, show them around. If you like it, buy it. If you don't, leave, next. No, there was a whole ritual that had to take place. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Really? And then she went on complaining to a, the friend, the realtor, who was a friend, complaining on and on about how I wouldn't bow down and how my uh, achievements in film and different things were so paltry compared to his and how I should have been sucking his whatever, um, you know, right off the bat. I mean, that should have been a given. <laughs> In fact, I guess they just came over for some, some, some free love. You know, figuring you could just throw your weight around. Look, you'd be the President of the United States, same thing. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, celebrity does not demand me to bow down. Or catch my interest like, oh, hello, how are you? And No, you don't get a pass. You're a scumbag, El Presidente. A liar and a scumbag. Period. So, stay away. You know, maybe all of you are. I don't know. But I'll judge you on your character. That is, all the lies that I've counted, and all the deceit that you did in the campaign, and all the character assassination, and all the crap you pulled... You are not welcome in my home or in my, around my person, ever. That's not only you, but that's people like you. People like you would not be welcome, no matter what they're... You could be king of the world. You could say, throw me in jail for not welcoming you and letting you just take over my house and have sex with my wife. No. The answer is no, you don't impress me. Your status does not impress me. It just means you're scum. In this world, the lowest goes the highest, it seems, a lot of the time. You look at all the other dictators in history, besides this one, well, this one doesn't have those powers yet, but he's the same personality type, which is a cult of personality, which is why these people worship him. If you say anything, you're, you're anti-gay or whatever it is. Some stupid thing like that. Well, you're not welcome either. And the reason why is because my weakness is I just don't like stupidity. I don't like Kool-Aid drinkers, true believers, all those kind of things. You know, I did my thing for America and worked to educate as much as I could here. Uh, and, and, you know, the Lord gave me the unction to say, Inquire of me, son. Inquire of me. And I let him direct me that there was still some kind of hope. And then the answer on November 6th was no. Definitively. It wasn't like kind of. It was no, definitely, that's it. So I came straight away to you to say, this is what the Lord showed me. It's over. And there is no going back. So look, you little people. You little worshipers, um, let me explain something to you. You don't have to worry about me or any of the rest of us old-fashioned people. Um, you're not going to get any further opposition. It's yours. Own it. You can begin by owning the food stamp cutting in Wisconsin and the unemployment lines and the rest of it. You can, you can begin by owning all that. But I'm out of your equation you know, if uh, I had some hopes for Texas, that Texas would secede. <laughs> if Texas would secede from the nation, I would go become a Texan. 
You know, I'd, I'd immigrate to Texas. Yeah, if it looks like that's going to be a possibility, that's where I'd go. Big, big old Texas. Because um, as an economy, they're a country. They don't need the rest of the United States. It used to be the same thing with California, but no longer since the, um, since the takeover occurred. Now that the takeovers occurred, the only thing California is going to have is poverty. Funny, in the most beautiful place on earth, one of the most beautiful places on earth, some of that coastline there is just absolutely beyond belief. So gorgeous. It's, uh, you won't be able to step on it. They already have it so that if you try to take your dog on a walk, they'll ticket you. So the next thing is no more humans taking a walk on the beach. I kid you not. They, 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 they will put it all off limits. And if they could, they would kill every last one of you. They would kill every last human on earth because they feel that humanity is a blight upon the earth and that if there were no humans here, the animals would have a good shot. And it's up to us to uh, limit the damage of humans by limiting humans. So they're eugenicists, the left. Their uh, Planned Parenthood, all that is to get people uh, to have abortions and to shrink the population. They'll push the gay agenda, not because they think it's fair to be accepting and inclusive of gays, but because they want to shrink the population. It's good for the planet. That kind of ethos was the ethos in Nazi Germany. Last guy that did that was Adolf Hitler. Yeah, and then the, he took it another step. He said, you know what? These Jews are the problem. Let's get them. How many on the left on Twitter are saying, let's annihilate all the Jews? Everybody. Ironically, Hollywood's putting all that out, and the people that run Hollywood are mainly Jewish, but they're also cheering on the end of Israel. It's amazing. It's, I would have never thought that I would have seen all the things that... I never would have thought that humanity could become so enslaved and dumbed down. But in America, can't stand with them, and they won. You know, they won. So it's theirs. They can own it. Um... And I kind of emotionally divested. I mean, I know what they are. I, saying leftist is really the wrong term. It's more like they are under the satanic Luciferian cabal. And that's who they're owned by. They don't know that. They were taught that they're God, but they're mind controlled, all of them. I mean, let me put it this way. They're taught that one of the parts of the platform they must do to be politically correct, to get a job in Hollywood, if you have rejected God accepted abortion and are at least bisexual or transgender, one of those, then you have a a pretty good chance. So they'll conform to that in order to become famous. And if, you know, what can I say? What is that? No, I saw that when I was a kid, you know, and they were telling me to do that. And I'm like, uh, uh, what? You know, my, my reaction was, you got to be kidding me. So if you do all these things, and me, even if they're not in your heart, but you're just doing it as a surface thing, you know, paying lip service, making you a sellout and a hypocrite, um, you'd be able to work. Well, then how's that going to sit with you? Now, th- there's a dark side to it in that in the same system, there's a need for <laughs> blood and people get killed all the time and all that. And you have to look the other way. It gets covered up, but everyone knows in the community it was a sacrifice. So you have to, like, look the other way. So now that makes you a murderer for your fame and your fortune. You're, you, 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 bow down. Oh, you're it. You're the guy. You're the God. You're awesome. You. You're an icon. I see where uh, on a political commercial, Cher was with Kathy Griffin or someone, I don't know, but she was calling herself an icon. And I just was like, yeah, you all hag. You're, that's right, you're an icon. Maybe you'll turn to stone like Lot's wife, turn to a pillar of salt, you know, holding on, trying for her big comeback. Uh, I'd just be crying if it were, you know, it's too sad to even cry over. What happened to people? And the rest of them, they all worship the icons, so 
they're kind of like in the same boat. And then the celebrities keep them there by saying, if you don't, if you don't do what I tell you, you're going to be called a racist and blah, 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 blah. And that's been, and that's it basically. The blind leading the blind, everyone gone his own way. And so let's make predictions. I predict California will have to officially go bankrupt and be reorganized. And what will happen is the closing down of most industries, California will become kind of like Bangladesh in India. You know, um, it become, you know, it's a country, but I mean in the India region. It become like, like that. Um, you'll become like a third world country. But don't worry, they'll feed you. They'll give you a reward for your political, uh, uh, for your political trust. And they'll dole it out, little crumbs. Meanwhile, the money is squandered. Because when the businesses move away, and they will, and they already are in droves, and the uh, people I know that are of means out there, they're all moving away. So they won't be paying your taxes, California. Whoever's left will be paying them, and you can't afford them. Thus, bankruptcy. Uh, if you have notes out there, um, you know, muni bonds and things like that in California areas, I would cash them in. I don't even hold those things. Unless you're suicidal. Um, as far as America, the rest of America will go that way as well. It's really just one big bankruptcy on the horizon and a moving in of Homeland Security, the National Guard, and the military to quell the rebellion of people that are angry, especially the people that voted for Obama and voted for all this, and then they see what he's done. They're going to be really mad. And uh, so they got those people in place and also detention centers to carry people off who are upset with losing their homes and their jobs and the ability to feed their families and all that. They're going to be mad. They're going to be really mad. So I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about solutions. You know, at this point, because really the world's the way it was back in the time of Jesus. The world is the way it was in the time it ever was. Um, there was a time for mourning the, the end of America, which we've been doing. And, you know, the funny thing about it is they will never inherit it because what they think they're getting in with their majority, what they think they're getting is that they're going to have America to themselves now. No, well, you, that's true. You will because we'll all be gone <laughs> and uh, you can just enjoy it. I don't know, having guys with machine guns at the airport. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really just something I never grew up with, and I can't really relate to that. But I suppose those people that have a cult of personality around dictators, they're going to be very pleased because you're going to get a series of dictators in the world now. And, you know, some people are saying this is paving the way to the Antichrist, but Obama himself has very many attributes, especially in Daniel uh, 11, you know, um, verse 30 and on, really, you know, tends to look like this is the guy. And, uh, but I don't know, you know, I'm, um, it's forbidden to me and forbidden of those who serve the Lord to identify this person before God does it globally. We know that the Antichrist will demand worship. We know that it's a real thing. And that, you know, it's prophesied by, say, in Islam, the Mahdi will come to take care of all the people and demand worship. And those who don't will, be, uh, will lose their lives. Um, it's even said that those who refuse to take the mark of the beast, you know, the chip, may also lose their lives, certainly lose their freedom. Wouldn't be able to buy and sell. Wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, participate in the system. That, the new conformity will really be checked by chips rather than trying to guess about people. Their rank will be on the chip. So people will know whether to bow down or not. The celebrities are now the gods. If you don't bow down, then 
your, their sycophants will call you names. So we're already at that stage. Entitlements are already being withdrawn in, in Wisconsin, lowered. So we'll have to see how that rationing goes, how long this game will go. But for people like me, and, you know, and I know a lot of you who were disaffected and dropped out of the American equation a long time ago, I had to ride it until the Lord told me, stand down. And so I did. And I announced that, you know, I think in the minds of many people, it will be shown in history that the end of it was 2012, November. 236 years. And at this point, it's kind of like, okay, so we're... No, I still um, will honor the, you know, taxes and laws and rules, and you know, unless it says you can't read from your Bible in your home or something like that. I mean, obviously, I will not go along with that. But, you know, it's, if I lived in Rome at the time of Caesar, I would have said, well, Rome's gone. It's going to fall. It's already fallen. It's gone the way of decadence. Um, as Jesus said, I'll give to Caesar what Caesar's. I'm a man of peace really not a man of war, certainly not uh, a man who wants to slander and call people names for not believing. I mean, I've said idiot, but uh, that's more of a general term, not not for um, saying one thing or the other or not going along with Obama. It's more like ignorance due to not knowing that your maker, it's about him and not, not you and not me. Any position outside of that is, in my view, ignorance. But it's self-evident that, that this is something that we all should have known. So it's kind of, in a way, frustrating because, and thus you get, you know, terms like idiot because, well, no, believe me, I've, on blogs, I've been called and tweeted as an idiot constantly. You know, there's a smug superiority on the, of anyone who is a Kool-Aid drinker that if you don't go along, you're an idiot and a homophobe and racist and whatever else. You know, um, eventually that kind of rhetoric will win out and people like you will they'll say, well, we're better off without them. Maybe they need detention centers to live in. You know, there is that potential. Now, will that happen? I will keep praying, but in prophecy, it goes to that before there's a solution, before the Lord sets it right. It goes to the lowest common denominator. It goes to the lowest form that humans can think of, which would be, you know, say a global caliphate dictatorship where you have to bow down to false gods and do what you're told, or you're, um, the, the biggest anti-gay people I know of on the planet uh, would be Islam that puts gays to death. Yet, most Islamics, uh, I'll just say many, or a culture in the Middle East, is that sex with boys, for example, is, is a natural thing and pretty normal, uh, pretty, pretty uh, ubiquitous. So that's weird, isn't it? They'll put gays to death, but then they'll have that going on. <laughs> Um, and again, it's so pathetic it can't be looked at. It's just you just have to shake your head and go, you know, it's completely illogical. But it is logical from the standpoint that humanity has been here before, will go there again. Um, if there is cause to change my mind on the failure of America and the the, the end of, of it, you know, it there'll still be a land called America. But it won't be a land of freedom and opportunity. It'll be a land of, it'll be like Europe, let's say. So that's what I mean. I'm not saying that there won't be Washington and presidents and false, you know, the elections are phony, obviously rigged. Um, it won't be, it'll be just like that, you know. And uh, so to me, that's not what was fought for. That's not the freedom that was established. That's not the Declaration of Independence. That's not the Constitution. Um, indeed, many of the aspects of the Constitution, the people in power will overturn through constitutional convention at some point, 
coming up with a new regulatory constitution to reflect all the regulations going into place now on freedom of speech, freedom of movement, economic freedom, and all those are to be swept off the table at this time. And in fact, like I said, 68 regulations a day, something like that, um, designed to restrict, confine, and take the freedom away from people is what's going on now. I, it did, he didn't even wait one day after the election to get busy with you know, destroying the rest of it, which we all predicted would happen. Businesses will have to move. They will have to leave. The administration and others of their ilk do not mind if businesses leave. They don't mind that because they feel they'll be able to take over the industries, especially energy. Uh, well, they failed with auto manufacturing. Uh, Chrysler uh, is owned by Fiat. Jeeps are made in China. So that, there's, that's gone. So that was a lie. GM is on the verge of bankruptcy. We'll go bankrupt with Government will take over. They tried to force the Chevy Volt down everyone's throat. Didn't happen. $10 a barrel ga a gallon gas will help. Um, the kind of freedom that Silicon Valley has had to develop, you know, the Mac, you know, the thing that's kind of changed the world, the iPads, the iPhones, the uh, smartphones, the smart technology, the chips, the CDMH, all these things, all these innovations. Um, would still be going on somewhat, but it would be owned and operated by the government, who will bail it all out. Right now, they're, doing, they're still doing okay. Right now, there are still businesses here. Right now, there are still corporations in California that employ people. If you have that many people in a place like L.A., San Francisco, any of those places, a ma if mass unemployment ensued, there would be riots. There would be looting, and the stores would be empty of groceries, and they would be empty of goods. That, that, that thing would be over. And the government would come in on the white horse to be the solution. Now, surely you can see that. Um, and people say, well, what do we do? And it just, it's all a matter of perspective. The people that, you know, the emails I've gotten touting socialism and the rest of it, are people that only see it from their little perspective. You know, what am I going to get? Me, me, me. You know, and I understand that. If you don't have food to eat, you know, the people that caused you not to have food to eat will come in and feed you. And you'll keep voting for them because they're your saviors. But the problem with that is, eventually it just goes to tyranny Look, the, let me just take it to another spiritual standpoint right now. The spiritual misery of people in America right now, worst I've ever seen. People are at each other's throats. They're very angry. They're hostile. The violence is increasing. And it's completely dysfunctional. It's getting worse by the day. Since, and that was another thing about this regime continuing. Um, people are going to be in the next, another year or two because it's time to do what we did at the 2008 election. Another year or two, people are going to be depressed and miserable, and there'll be a new movement that it's like, if you're not with the program and excited about where we're headed, then you're part of the problem. And your depression is because you need retraining mentally. So that will be, that's how, the, the, oh no, they'll never take responsibility. That's, that will be the next, the next thing. Confiscation of private property, that's a goodie that they, oh boy, they cherish that. Just like in the days of Stalin, where they, in, in the Bolshevik Revolution before, where they just simply went out and killed all the landowners. Boy, that was a great day, huh? All those people that own property, they need to pay their fair share, damn it. And for having had that property and being farmers and not having the state do it, they should be killed. And that was Russia. I know, it seems unbelievable. And I think when we go to some, a guy like Brother Thomas, who was the only one that I know that so early came out and, and announced this was happening, announced the, basically the structure of what we would see. And I'll, I'm going to catch up with him. I'm, I'm sure I will. We're gonna have, I'm having to wait on, I need a repair done in my studio because... I have 
<laughs> all kinds of exotic equipment. If something goes wrong with it, I have to have people come in and fix it. It's not like, you know, and I have to wait till the end of this month to get a certain box fix that, that, that blew up from some stupid thing. I don't even know. But it will be fixed. And when, when it is, then I'll be able to uh, conduct interviews. And really, you know, don't take my word for it. Go ahead and take a look at Brother Thomas. Uh, I, I think it's, oh, shoot, I, you know, just, just Google him and you'll get to his blog. He predicted this. And he was saying it in 2005, maybe even earlier. And he mentioned the word communist. People thought he was crazy. He got all kinds of guff and all kinds of people saying things. He predicted that he, he qualified and quantified what we were looking at. And he said, this is the time of the, of the indoctrination. Then comes the purge, which we saw with the military and everybody else. Uh, Betrayus is the next one that was purged, right? He was purged. He was, he was forced out. Oh, that affair thing. Went, they, they got blackmail affairs on everybody. No, he was forced out and, um, because he still obviously was a patriot, which they can't afford to have. And so then after the purge comes the lockdown. See, the, he had it all structured. He had the pre, then during every stage that he said occurred exactly as a blueprint for the same communist uh, takeover in Russia. Same exact thing we saw here. And the youth will cheer it in as the new way of the future because the youth are, they're dumb. They've been dumbed down. They don't know their history. They don't know, like someone telling me that um, freedom, free markets, and those kind of ideas are old-fashioned, but this way, this is the new way, progressive socialism. It's like, do you, you fool. <laughs> That's been the way of the world from day one. Day one. That's how dictators get their power, day one. Never mind. I, it's, in other words, I, I can't have this conversation much longer. More like I want to look back. So he predicted on my show many times that it's, we're looking at a structured communist takeover of the world, takeover of the world, and it won't be called communism, you know, necessarily, because that's like old, right? Because we're progressive futurists. Uh, it will be called something else. But anyway, it's the same people and the same thing. And once they get what they want, he also mentioned that they would kill the true believers, that is, the people that put them in power who are disappointed now, who see they've been duped, who will start screaming, then they'll be dealt with. They've already dealt with the scientists, and, you know, you've heard talk about climate change coming back up, uh, carbon taxes, all that. By the time they get done with everything, they've already taxed the Internet to an extensive, uh, the, the cell phones you may have noticed, that's why I'm kind of, you know, I can almost give my cell phone up and go to Skype and even go to a smaller like iPad and just use that as both a pad and a phone using Skype because the other is just uh, exorbitant due to being taxed. And eventually I predict a global depression. And, and he's predicted the same thing, Brother Thomas. I mean, he predicted everything in real time as it was happening and it happened just exactly structured point by point by point by point event by event by event by event right down the line unfettered by the way no pushback as he predicted he'd been looking at this a long time he knew what to call it everyone else said he was nuts for saying the word communist and all that he knew what to call it he knew he he knew how to predict it and eventually it becomes as he's prepared for and one of his songs is Violence in the Suburbs. And, um, you know, basically that's it. In other words, there's a takeover. You know, the whole idea of gang stalking, we dealt with that. Gang stalking basically comes from, you know, traditionally out of uh, top-down controlled dictatorships like Stasi Germany, East Germany, okay? Um, Gang stock. In other words, they would play games where they all become your friends, but they're all really spying on you. I mean, those kind of things uh, were perfected also by the KGB. 
Uh, it's being rolled out here because it's very important for neighbors to spy neighbors. And then when there's someone undesirable in the neighborhood, they must push them out by creating false rumors about them, number one. Uh, number two, they have to, uh, you know, electronically harass them, send microwaves to them, infiltrate their homes, put cameras up, microphones, be able to, to track and harass because usually if they're the wrong politically, the wrong spirit, there's some reason they're, they're not with the group or conformed or they're singled out. And then the logical conclusion is they get sick, they get hurt. In a couple of cases, I know people who have died from kind of seemingly unrelated things, but in the process of being gang stalked and harassed, by official people, and these people are, are sanctioned by the powers that be to do that harassing. Some of them trained to be organizers of gang stalking. But that Brother Thomas was saying this would eventually, and, and you know, we've had it, you know, in different places. People have taken video of how they've been followed to Walmart and followed in. And I've I've known, I had a situation once where I believe people followed me into like a. CVS, you know, and they were reporting back via cell phone. Okay, he's coming out, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I largely ignored it. You know, I largely ignored it until it became cameras in the house and break-ins and things like that. And then things moved around. And then eventually I said, you know what? I better leave California. This is not going too well. So I've had all those, all that harassment for a long time. And basically it was because... Um, I was anathema to Satan. I mean, I know that sounds almost um, glib to say it like that, but <laughs> at the end of the day, there's no other conclusion. You know, I was, but I wasn't even aware because I didn't, I had not dedicated myself to the Lord or anything like that. I hadn't dedicated myself to a politic. All I was trying to do was get along and, but the, uh, but not allowed. And I was like, hey, why am I, why are you singling me out? Why, why, you know? And then later you come to realize, because if you're not one of them, it doesn't matter what your philosophy is, what your politics are, whether you tout Jesus or not, it, all that matters to them is, that's not one of us, let's get him. So they're, usually they recruit criminal types, low lowlifes, you know, and they get trained in sort of a quasi-police work, and, and then they go out and they do what they do, reporting back uh, everything to higher-ups who then, you know, use the information to do whatever. I, I mean, you know, you all, all of you who have been in this situation, you realize that. Um, but the, the trouble you've had is, and then, uh, yes, and then there's the community of people who have been mind-controlled, implanted, uh, tracked, and that's something even more profound when there's implants involved. It's like the whole alien abduction thing is a part of it. You, if you look at alien abduction, basically, alien abduction is surveillance, right? At the end of the day, alien abduction is surveillance. It's tracking, isn't it? And, well, with the chip in the book of Revelation speaks about, in Revelation 13, talks about tracking every single individual globally with real-time data updates 24-7 of the entire human population. And that's the, the thing they're salivating over right now. That's in reach. Let me ask you a question. Will you take the chip? Let's say you're going to church and the church says, nope, that's not the mark of the beast. We can tell you because we're your teachers and we're teaching you right out of the Bible. And if they want to have a chip to make sure that you've got your health insurance and uh, make sure that you're, you know, they know who you are when you're going to shop and whatnot. We don't want terrorists. Um, go ahead and take the chip because it's not the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation. You won't lose your salvation. Will you believe your pastor when he says that? Because they're all being trained to say that. Will you, will you agree to take the chip if your pastor tells you to? 
Because I know you don't listen to me when I told you the, the church's big monitoring device. <laughs> Talk about gang stalkers. That's, that's like a lot of the popular. Most of the people in church, most all pastors are mind control. They're just mind control servants of um, coming out of their schools. You can't get to be a pastor unless you're vetted by the seminary. And then they assign you to whatever church. So that's right there. You're compromised. You know, so you never get to see a real pastor because, and I'm not saying they don't do good things, and, but the ministering to people is a bad thing because what are they ministering? They're bringing people over. They're bringing people in the church over to have home visits and Bible study. And what they're doing is they're doing a top-down control on the population and real-time data updates to the powers that be on a daily basis. And that's can even go further and more profound when you bring the chip into it. So the churches will be, in my view, touting the chip as not part of the book of Revelation. Um, and it's the right thing to do to make sure we don't have terrorists because terrorists wouldn't have a chip. Thus, if you don't have a chip, I guess you're a terrorist. And that's kind of the way things are. It's pretty scary. You know, it really is. I mean, when you think about it. It's the worst futuristic sci-fi novels. It's Philip K. Dick on steroids. Remember uh, Total Recall, Philip K. Dick, when, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of tyranny that the, uh, that the people were living under on Mars, you know, and as being like a metaphor for a future of here. Or Red Dawn, a movie coming out later on, you know, of this takeover and the people trying to fight back. In the case of Red Dawn, they don't win in the end. They're just little spread out militias here and there and groups here and there who are trying to rebel and fight back. But basically, um, or did they win? I can't, I'm not sure if they won or not, if it had a happy Hollywood ending. But let me put it this way. As this stuff creeps in when they make their move, um, there will be nobody able to fight back because the Bible says, and I'm going to go by my prophecy here in the book, nobody can make war with a beast. See, that's what you're dealing with. That's why I think the storm came. That's why the, the strange election results were so overwhelmingly, uh, you know, decisive in the sense that it was over, you know, before it even got started. No recount, no nothing. It's uh, no one can make war with the beast and nobody no matter what you think of this guy in the White House, nobody can defeat him because he's been allowed or given a, given a protection by God to fulfill his time. In other words, this is the cup of iniquity being filled up. This is a portion for the time of the end. The, you may pray against it, but if you read the Bible, honestly, you'll see this has to come in before the Lord returns. So the cup of iniquity will go full. The time of the beast's reign will be implacable. No one can make war with a beast. No one can stop this. No one can turn it around. That's why I've said what I said about the United States, too, because I myself have to wean off any idea of, you know, patriotism as laudable as that can be at times is no place for it now because it's, you know, there's no need to be unpatriotic or patriotic it's now a wash because it's irrelevant at this point. You know? Um, the pomp and circumstance that the, seeing the enemy say the Pledge of Allegiance, it's only a show to get your confidence. It's hard for me to watch that. I don't really care to see that. Whether it's at ball games or anything else, it is, you know, like... They're still in denial, singing about something that doesn't really exist anymore, really. And um, it's just kind of, even ball games themselves, with all the commercials and programming, it's just a way to keep the masses having bread and circus so they won't think about things too much. You know, I never got into football. I kept thinking I was going to be a happy idiot and just get my football going and I was thinking maybe I'd root for Dallas, you know, and, um, and get on down there and 
watch the game. You know, find a team to root for, whether it's the Broncos or Dallas or the Cards or whatever. Find a way. The Patriots. <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know. You know, find some, you know, Arizona. I, uh, um, you know, uh, gee, the stories of sports heroes and celebrities. You know, I'm thinking, okay, basketball's come up. Let's root for some. I realize, eh, something's blocking me from rooting for these people. I guess it's, I just feel like I've, you know, I saw through it all, and I see it's just the matrix. And it's really hard for me. Like, I'll go into a restaurant, bar, and they'll have, uh, you know, the big screen, all the games up. And one that we go to has, like, four big screens on it. All, they have four different games on a Sunday going on. People show up there with their jerseys, and they, they sit around and have their beers, and they scream, yay, you know, for their team. And it's kind of hard for me to see. But even there, I thought I'd go there and maybe get the... It's like, it's like the patriotic spirit. You know, get behind your team. Get behind your country. God and country. And now it's just like, well, there's just a bunch of liars lying to us. What are we going to do? The answer is, what we're going to do is seek the Lord when he can be found. And we're going to be found to be there. We're going to sing our songs. And we're going to wait for insights. And we're going to wait for beautiful things to come and beautiful ideas and, and things to think on that are lovely. And um, we've got to be about that because we must have quality of life. In this time period, we must have quality of life. You know, I don't want to go into... Consp- the conspiracy community is just says anything. And if you listen to them, it's like, tomorrow, you're in chains. And, you know, yes, all this is in the works and will they haul a peaceful loving people off to a concentration camp and kill them if because they're peaceful and loving because they have the Lord and they don't mean ill will to anybody will they just go take them out it's like well will they will they take a partial birth baby and put a drill in its head a real baby a baby with a soul and then kill it well they seem to do that You think God will bless a place that does that? Uh, As that is a policy? (laughs) No, you can't believe. And behind the scenes, do you know who these people are? Who are your rulers? You know what they do? How about the celebrities? How How about the guys in Hollywood? You know what the deep, dark secret is? The thing they kill people over? Well, it's going... It's kind of out, isn't it? The thing that runs the whole world is sort of out. And the idea here is to have a global community where it's out and the worship is open publicly and to purge the true believers, that is the people who are anti-God, pro, pro, pro-atheism, pro pro-political. pro pro-political. In other words, the, if you're anti-God, celebrities and politicians will be your gods. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just kind of, we, we know what's happening, don't we? We know what's happened. We know where we're headed. We must have happiness. Don't you feel happy that, you know, the mind control, the commercials, the sports teams, the celebrities. Can you really bring yourself to like, let's say, you know, Miss, Ms. Icon herself, Cher, was in a movie. Would you really just have to go see her after her behavior on Twitter, calling anyone that doesn't agree with her uh, these awful names and, and insults and, and insinuating that you hate groups of people because... Um, you don't see it her way, which is all bullying. And then, in, oh, okay, Cheryl, I'll give you a pass. No, she's a vicious, vindictive little bitch. I don't want to spend a dime on her because I know her now. You know, maybe if she didn't go on Twitter, people, you know, if Russell Crowe didn't go, I know him now. He's a small-minded little twerp 
you know, a mental midget. I, I wish I hadn't heard those things because he was such a big, talented actor. He was big in my mind, you know, a big gladiator, you know, the Academy Awards, you know, that kind of guy. No longer. He's a little man with little ideas. Petty man. Um, hostile feels he's entitled. He can throw his phone at people if they don't agree with him. You know, I, I don't, you know, sort of like Sean Penn. It's just, you know, spoiled little celebrities feeling that they're above the rest of us. They can do what they want and bully you. And, well, now that we've seen them in social media, all those traits have come out. It's t- no humility. No. And you know the funniest thing about these people is most of them who tout feeding the poor and all this stuff, they are the ones who give the least, give the least to people in need. Now, I certainly have done that, done my share. In fact, that's, I get people requesting things of me and trying, you know, I know people are in trouble and sometimes I can help them, sometimes I can't, but when I can, I, when I can, I do. When I can't, I back off. But I mean, you know, I don't make a show of it. I'm not going to make a show of it because the Lord says, if you're going to give people things, if you're going to do things, you know, you don't need credit. Okay. You don't need credit. That's ridiculous. I just do things I'm led to do. And then the crowd credit goes to the Lord. Could have been me, you know, that's it. But the show of the celebrities going to these big charity events so they can be seen and promote their celebrity, this gets to be sickening. This gets, and you know, the rest of it to the politicians who are all liars, this gets to be sickening as well. Um, so we're going to have to be about finding, you know, because I feel there's a real rise of inspiration to those of God who are going to be doing who are doing unbelievable musical things and, and things, you know, they've never been allowed to express themselves. I, this is just another horror that should not be, folks. It just shouldn't be, you know. It shouldn't be that unless you, you know, <laughs> go past the point of no return, you don't work. I mean, that, that's ridiculous because if you do that, then you're twice dead or dead. Um, then obviously your soul is spoken for. And I've noticed even people that are on political opposite ends, if they've both sold their soul, they both have a brotherhood or or community with one another because they know they're going to hell, or that's what they think, even though they don't believe in hell or God. But they still know deep down something very bad is going to happen to them. And so... They got no problem sacrificing lambs because they're already going down. So what the heck? So they're not, you know, these are, these are called, the Bible calls these, and I really should be reading from scripture here. The Bible calls these double-minded. And the double-minded are unstable in all their ways. When you come to Jesus, you can't come to Jesus. First of all, he comes to you. No one comes unless the Lord calls them. The Lord calls, not everyone. The people he calls, most people resist. Many are called and few are chosen. That's true. You know, um, the Lord breaks those. If I wasn't broken completely, and I mean just barely hanging on, I would not have been receptive to the Lord. See what I mean? Had my circumstances not been perfect, I had the benefit of being beaten down from early childhood in, you know, in abuse and mind control and all kinds of horrible things, um, which were pretty normal, by the way. All the other kids got the same treatment, and they, they are out there today ruling the world. Oh, maybe that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> but they are. I see them. Big time movie directors and they're they're um, actors, they're, they're politicians, they're big business magnates, you know what I'm saying? And they were there, they were there too, when we were kids, in the same rituals. They were there. And they thrived. 
but not everyone did. And the, and the ones who went lame, like they shoot horses, don't they? So, you know, the other ones got dead. So it's, it's but yes, I saw them and, and I saw what made them the movers and shakers of the world. It was what was done at four and five and six years old. You know, and that was kind of the, and it's hard to explain. Um, but you can break a person and they can just snap to do your obedience. And I guess that's what happened. And you can break a person and then they, they just become traumatized and a victim. And, you, you know, and then, and then if they're strong, I must have been strong, you hang on till you find an answer. You know, what is this world and why is all this going on? I mean, when you're not even old enough to think, they do this to you. So that you would never ever, it's not like you get to be 16 and make a decision. It's been made at three. So that you won't get away, so that you will do the family proud, so that you will be a mover and shaker. Absolutely. That's one reason they do it all. What is it they do? They put a demon in you through sexual trauma in a ritual setting. It's a, like a rite of, you know, it's like a baptism. Why do they do that? So that you will carry on the tradition. And you can do that to your children. No one's going to know because it, it doesn't exist. Anyone who investigates it, they can't because it's, it's above and beyond all the Satanism stuff, all this occultic secret, all that. Is You will never investigate it. It will never be on Geraldo. It will never exist. You can trust me on that and take that to the bank. When they finally roll it out as an overt thing, it will be not reflected upon that it wasn't before. You know what I'm saying? It will be looked at as... Well, this is what's going on now. There is no before. And um, no one will ever complain about it because it's kind of like this. Here's the world today. Um, the world is like a person who was raped in the middle of the night, like a kid who was raped in the middle of the night and went into denial about it, wasn't sure and the next day feels like something happened, but they're not sure. So they go on a lifelong journey to find out what's wrong. People ask, why are you depressed? What's wrong with you? Well, the problem is the person never confronted the fact that he or she was raped in the middle of the night, not told about it. But then, you know, we're kind of half asleep or drugged or whatever, and they weren't able to figure out that it, and so they went into denial half the, anyway it ruins their life or it can make them pliable to, the, to, to being controlled one or the other but something happened well America to me looks like a child who was raped in the middle of the night and is in denial and is not sure what happened and that's kind of um, that's the way they work so when you see collective for example 9-11 was being raped being put in a ritual. So a lot, a lot, what I'm saying is, a lot of these people have splits in their personality from these things. So that you can trigger them, take them somewhere, make them do some bad thing, put them back and they'll never remember they did it or they'll have a weird memory that did something happen. And they've all been collectively now involved since 911, the cover-up, the cover-up, all these cover-ups have traumatized the people. So they know something's really wrong. Like they were raped, but they can't put their finger on it that they were raped in the middle of the night last night by people there that they just couldn't imagine would do something like that. And yet it's this ongoing ancient system that's been there forever. It's all about mind control, it's all about technology, it's about creating people into robots, having them do your bidding, control power, and all that. And uh, if people really woke up and realized what was happening to them, they would, you know, in many cases, not be able to handle it. Not understand that some things are done collectively to rape us, just like kids, you know, Illuminati circles or whatever, and 
elite circles or what do you want whatever you want to call it powerful circles uh, didn't get there on their own you didn't build that no no if someone you had some help well what Obama would call help I might call rape in other words yes there's a group of people who made that happen <laughs> and the world cannot admit that it's the world is the rapist and that it's everything and everyone in every place and there's no there's no end to it we were been made the rape that took place took place thousands of years ago you know and we were made to be fit extensions for the demonic for this realm to take us over and they could split our personalities so that we could do evil and not know we were there doing it become part of a mob group mentality and do awful something awful not even realize how we got to that point because we're trauma victim as a nation, as a world, as every human being is subject to it. How could they do that to Ambassador Stevens in that mob and, and, and torture him in that way when he meant them no harm? Uh, because the world's traumatized. They know not what they do when they put Jesus up on the cross because the world is raped and traumatized and won't look at it. And if you won't look at it, then you can be controlled to do more bad things or to emulate the bad thing that's been done to you rather than go and say, oh my God, I was raped. You people did it. This is the world. I accept it because Jesus loves me. I understand that God loves me and he's showing me this and he's going to protect me and guide me through it. Amen. So I can look at my rapist and see what they do. The world won't do that. They're going to get raped over and over again until they finally get the message, all the niceties you see are not nice. All the layering Disneyland layers are not Disneyland. The iron fist is right there with a grip on every single one. You've got to find a way to get free. That's the Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't take that freedom but we'll vilify Jesus, make him look like he's old-fashioned and hokey and outdated. And, uh, and then, <laughs> uh, yes, he's the way, the truth, and life, and they all know that. And um, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you can have one. Simply cry out to him, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm a, I'm a sinner in a sinful world, and I'm stuck, and I'm lost. I need your help, Jesus. Just show me the way. And then he'll, he'll enlighten you as to the whole story. If this podcast has brought you to that point, then obviously um, he's doing it. So he's calling you in. We're going to have to dedicate ourselves to Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Lord, the one. And they're all going to call for ecumenicalism and everything's everything and it's an offense if you... Jesus, I'm offended by Jesus, but not Buddha and all. It's going to go on like that hypocrisy because it's all a way to obfuscate the truth. In Jesus, Yahshua, God saves. There's a mystery there. And he lives in you. And if he lives in you, then no demon can. And he guides, he takes you. And he takes you away. And there's a mystery of Christ. No one's ever been able to refute it ultimately. No one's ever been able to understand how this faith comes and this love comes in a person. And this love radiates out. And even when they're stoning you, you love them. And, you know, you don't hate them. Just like me. Do I hate uh, Americans? Absolutely not. I love them. I love all people. I feel frustrated of the ignorance. Sometimes I cuss and call them idiots. And I don't mean to do that because I'm now no better when I do that than those people calling me an idiot for not worshiping Obama or whatever, but uh, I'm human, that's my flesh. But no, I have a burden for humans or I wouldn't. The only thing going on here on earth is the divvying up of souls. It's not about someone's career because that comes and goes. It's not about uh, a shrine of a statue or something after someone dies because that's just an object that, that cankers and, and is destroyed. Um, nothing here is permanent. So what's really going on? The soul is permanent, and that's what it's all about. And the people in charge here want your soul. It's that simple. 
They want to take it away from God. So being here in a way is like a test. Will you give it up to them or will you not? And there really is, you know, they can give you, you can run around the track or, you know, pretend to be a big time actor. All the Academy Awards and all the movies, all the stuff, it's all, you know, people develop their talents and do some wonderful things. But the thing is, it, in the end of the day, it's fleeting. It goes. It's not about that. We, we, we want the applause so we humans were willing to sacrifice and become great at something so that we'll get applauded. But when you're old and dying, you don't care. It's not something you can take to the bank. It's not going to save you. They're not going to save you because all they're going to do is vet you for, so they can exploit you. So what's salvation? There's only one. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can actually take you out of this stupid thing and make it good, make it right. He'll give you his goodness. Because, but the first thing you have to admit is that something's wrong with you. And then the bigger growing up comes when you say, you know, it's really not about me. And it's really not about you. It's really, it's really about him and what or I, will, I will not do in, in regards to the creator of all things. It's really what will be my response to that. Because on my best day and my most charitable day, um, it won't save me. The only thing that's going to save me is eternity in him. I somehow have to get there. He's the only conduit out of this. That's why there's a whole campaign against him because they don't want people to, well, you saying all the Muslims are going to go to hell and all those arguments, I'm not going to answer those. I don't engage in those. All I'm saying is this is the way, the truth, and the life, period. You know, it, I don't know what's going to happen to people that reject God and have them, therefore, themselves as gods, and they worship themselves. You know, and here's how you worship yourself. My problems, my money or lack of, my job, my this, my that, my children, my disappointments, my elation, my belly, me, it's all about me. I'm just thinking, what's the government going to do for me? What can I get out of it? What's it going to do for me? How does that help me? How does this relationship help me? How do I feel? How do I think? What do I think about it? And that's what people do in general. And that is a state of ignorance. It's a state of, you know, sort of a psycho-narcissistic kind of, you know, a recipe for sadness, sorrow, and old age. I think a lot of these people that go senile really, they're not going senile. They just... They, they don't know what to do. They realize they've failed. They're going to die. They didn't, it didn't work. It didn't, life did not deliver up what it promised. That glory, those glory days are over. The phone doesn't ring. You know, I've got to find something permanent. God's the only way. But there's joy in him. No, oh yes, it's an ethical thing. You should. No, should's not the word. The word is Desire. I desire to be, for example, at peace. I desire to be singing a song. I desire to be not jealous, you know, that, that it's cool that everybody does what they do, you know, they can all have whatever. It's really cool, it's lovely to be, I uh, see the flowers, I love them. It's lovely to be in love. And that's kind of where we have to move. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, the USA being there or not being there is like an intellectual thing. If it's not there or if it's there, that's really almost irrelevant because it's, you know, it's one of these things that's fading away anyway. So it's, it's like anything else in the world. I can't hang on to it. It won't save me. At the same time, what's me? Me is nothing without what? Him who made me. 
So therefore, the only saving is going to be in him, not in me. So I got to find out what's he all about. What's going on there? And then you realize, oh my God, it's not just this 3D thing of hard slogging through this and evil and pain and torture, then you die. No, there's limitless horizons and unbelievable tableaus of of beauty and, and amazing things to behold. So we're going to have to be about getting on with that. We're going to have to be about getting on with that and doing the best we can and not beating ourselves up for not being, you know, masters of the universe. We're just going to have to not beat ourselves up for, you know, gee, I feel depressed. I let America down. No, you didn't let America down. It's got nothing to do with you. Countries rise and fall. You know, the best you can do is the best you can do every day. But basically, I'd rather do it for him so it's not in vain. Not for myself where it'd be fleeting. I'm going to do this work because I prayed about it and the Lord led me to do it. Now you're going to have a good result. I'm going to go this way because I prayed about it and the Lord gave me that drive. I'm going to talk about this or that because the Lord gave me this unction to do it. And so I'm going to let him flow through me rather than just... I know a lot of you are going to think... Well, that's just like your opinion, man. Well, no, it's not really my opinion. It's really, I can see how you could take it that way, but it's really allowing myself to be a vessel for this message to flow through. Believe me, if it was just about me and my opinion, it would be probably all day long. I'd be, uh, you know... um, like in a sand trap of relativity, just, I, I, you know, whatever way the wind blows, I'd be talking about that as the new reality. And that's not what happens here. What happens here is it always goes to Jesus. It always goes to the Lord. It always goes to Yahweh, Elohim, God, number one, Jah, the maker of all things. It's just got to be, our answers have to come there. I can't go, well, why the USA so, why, well, why is the world so screwed up? I, I just have to go there. In him, there is no darkness and no evil. So that's where I must go. He's my refuge and my strength. In him, I will put my trust. He is my salvation. So he's got to be where I wind up. So look, here's a way to do it. You see how beautiful our fall days are? Everything you see is praise God. Everything you see is praise God and the beauty. Maybe you'll sketch a a tree or something. Something kind of silly to bring you into alignment or oneness with God, into the appreciation of the beauty and the awesomeness of the Lord. And forget about... I mean, the last thing I'm, you know, the whole uh, Twitter thing and Facebook thing and all we've done with politics and name-calling and all this stuff, and I just... You know, maybe there's a time for that, for everything there's a season, but I believe that season's over. And instead of mourning forever and crying forever, I think you need to go on. You don't have to move somewhere to, to leave the scene. You don't even have to leave your Facebook or Twitter account to leave the scene. See what I mean? You don't. Um, <laughs> the... Allure of fame and fortune and whatnot will always be an allure to them. And those who are going to keep trying and trying and trying are going to be disappointed, especially now. The opportunities are still as few as they ever were. And the demands on one's soul and morals and thoughts and mind are too great. The demands of slavery are too vexing to one's soul. The demands for narcissism, meism, is too daunting because it leads to depression. You know, you will get wrinkles. You will get older. You will think that old people are stupid and you're smart and then you'll get older and realize, oh my God, what have I done? Rather than living a life of vanity that leads to sorrow, Jesus he brings us step by step into this alignment where all things are beautiful. 
And that has to be what it's about in the end, isn't it? We can't ever take the credit for anything good that we do. Anything good that we do, anything that's worthy of a report needs to be given praise to God, praise God, you know. And you do see people doing that here and there, not enough. You do see them, though. And if you look at them over time, you'll see they're much happier than the people that are depressed because they didn't make the grade, depressed because they failed at this, depressed because they failed, and depressed because they got older. And when they were younger, they didn't, they didn't clip it. They didn't nail it. Uh, well, I got news for you. A lot of people did nail it. They feel the same as you do now. They nailed it and they couldn't hold on. They, didn't, they can't hold on. So anyway, um, yeah, the only way to really, uh, I mentioned on the other one, if you want to contact me, you know, you might try either Twitter or Facebook to send a message or whatever. I don't read, you know, I tend, even now on emails, I just get so much kind of fog and junk mail and different things it's difficult you you could also try snail snail mailing and i i don't have the address there but I'll, maybe i'll put it there um i had one guy that was he was such a nice person and then he started like thinking i was talking to him on the radio and he started writing these horrible horrible hate messages and and just telling me i was going to burn in hell and all this i, I don't it's not that I don't care, okay? It's that I've been through this, I understand the warfare. So I tend to like mail that's related to things that I speak and, and you know, I don't have comments either because it's just exhausting. I, there's just no way I can go edit all those and I, I don't want to get caught up in personal feelings and personal attacks. So, you know, basically it's kind of like I speak to you here. And if you do send an email, like, like I had some about socialism and touting Obama and, you know, criticizing me for whatever I'd said about um, uh, what other people voted for, it had nothing to do with me. And then an attack on me, you know, I, I don't need that, really, seriously. And uh, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to be personally attacking. Um, I have no ill will toward anyone that, that has those opinions or are angry or they take offense, but it's really not my business, okay? It's really something you should sort out in your own mind and, and give it some thought. And if you feel like the podcast is off in any way or offensive or something that's not helping you or, or you know, something that's uh, irritating you and you don't like or, or whatever, then what you, you should do is exercise your free will and move on to something else. That would be better than wasting time um, misquoting and misstating what I had said and then making a point about that. I, uh, this is in politics. In politics, you can have all those debates. In film reviews, you can debate the reviewer. You can have all those debates. Here, there's no debate about anything. It's just kind of like, I'm led to say it. It's hard to do. I'll say it to the best of my ability and then get out regurgitating it and rehashing it is just not something that, that um, you know, or, or dealing with commentary about. I don't care about the commentary about it. I don't care about, you know, if it's affecting you and making you angry or making you happy even. It's still something you should deal with in your own life. Um, if you write me a snail mail, again, the cautionary thing was that is when this guy started in like he was my best friend, we're bros, blah, blah, blah. And then he turned and manifested in this like demonic way. And then it, it was just like, just, I hate it. I felt so sorry for him because I hated to see him violate and, aggra and his own principles to get me. And I, you know, obviously buttons were pushed and this is something he needs to deal with in his own life. You know, and it doesn't, what I eventually did is I just threw the letters out. See, I was like, ah, no need reading this. We know what it says. Blah, blah, blah. Did it stop me? No. 
do they have anything to do with you? You know, there's been people who have had, you know, there's been obviously people that they want to make death threats or they want to have a contest. It's like, it's not about you, you idiot. Or me, an idiot. It's not about us as idiots in our own minds, with our own thoughts and our own ideas. That makes us stupid. It's not about us. So you need to take anything positive or negative from it and soul search it and pray about it and incorporate it or turn it off. And ma'am, you know, maybe there's no excuse. Um, In religion, I guess, you can have all that because people can get really nasty. In politics, they get really nasty. Okay, this is not religion. And this is not politics. We may talk about it, but it's if there's nastiness, it's not going to be, you know, um, maybe I dealt with it a little bit today. I had about five or six emails kind of in a row of touting the benefits of socialism. And so I had to say something because there was a growing number of people who are kind of worshiping. I don't even know why they write. I don't even know why they listen, really, honestly, that if they were me in, in their shoes, I'd be so mad. I'd probably just want to throw something at me. But, you know, uh, because they bought in already. And they're saying Jesus would be a socialist and they want to argue that. And I'm like... Ah, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll just give it to you. You guys who are touting the benefits of uh, Obamacare and uh, Obama presidency and socialism and regulation and all the stuff who don't seem to see the forest for the trees or what's happening and what will soon happen here, which will be very tragic. And it's, it's horrible. We saw it and, you know, shortages are next. And I just, gosh, I just hate to see that. No, but uh, maybe the people need to suffer. Maybe that's usually, gosh, out history, thousands of years of this kind of thing went by before there was a you know one America, one 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 willing to fight back, and then that all got corrupted. Yeah, sure. So rather than get depressed about it, I just go to the Lord Jesus, where there's no corruption in Him. Ah, rest. You know, and if that's a if that's what you've got, then I do believe that you know you're fine. If you disagree with something I've said or been led to say, then I suggest you take it to God, and say, Lord, if Zeph is speaking out of his own mind and not your word, then please rebuke him in Jesus' name or whatever. If you really believe that, you could take it in prayer. But there's really nothing I can say. I mean, I say a lot of things I don't even want to say. I don't want to say like the whole world is corrupt and there's really, you know, almost no light in it and there's no hope in it and people are just going to go down the rabbit hole and they're going to just go ahead and collapse and then it'll be every man for himself and violence and then maybe there'll be some, you know, military top-down order and dissidents thrown again. I don't want to say all that. Are you kidding And I don't want to say that people get vetted here so they can have their jobs and whatnot and they got to bow down the beast in order to be given the opportunity. I don't want to say that. I didn't want to be in a place like that where they make you kill yourself in order to live. But then again, Jesus, we die to him. We die to the world. In other words, we have no hope in the world and no hope in being ranked and no hope in being successful in order to walk with him. We don't renounce the world. It's just that there's a, like, there's a, a setting free or a breaking of the contract because we're born in bondage, I believe. So that you know, when he sets us free, he separates us from all that legally legally, so that the world technically does not have the right or a whole, oh, they can kill you and they can do whatever they want to you, but I mean, they have no legal authority. And I think that's what the anger is all about. You know? But, you know, that there's 
misery loves company. And that if, if, if I've sold mine, you better sell yours or I'm going to kill you. Because I had to do that. You know, don't you be a holier than thou. It's like, man, listen, you got to have Jesus. And Jesus will redeem you from that dumb move you made. And now we'll just kill you. I'm already saved. See what I mean? And I don't want to talk about that. I really want to be able to go into a church and have a conversation with someone. A real one. You know, not sizing the other one up and saying platitudes and talking or beating around the bush. I want to talk to you. You talk to me. But it's not allowed. And I don't want to say that. And I don't even want to know the things I know. Certainly, I leave out all the gross stuff. I leave that to the conspiracy theorists. They're, they're, they're going at that all day long, talking about how people are doing their satanic rituals, or they're doing this or doing that, and they're hurting, you know, they're, they're planning on nuking us, or whatever it is. They go on and on and on every day about that. And I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to think about stuff like that. And I don't want to think about people I really like hating me because I'm not like them or vice versa. I don't want to do that either. And I don't want to talk about, you know, we both say Jesus, but, you know, we're not both saved. I don't want to do that. And they'll say, judge not lest you be judged, brother. I'm not your brother. I'm not judging. I'm just stating a fact. It's just a fact. My opinion of it is, I'm sad for you. I'm sad for you that you saw through it, but decided not to do anything about it because they told you you had Jesus, so that was good enough for you, rather than actually going through the the pain of that and, and the birth of that and the persecution that that means, but being coddled by your church and not really a persecution at all, except that you're not making as much money as you like to make, but that's why you go there. I don't want to say that. I, here's what I'd like to say. I'd like to say we're all <laughs> brethren in the body of Christ. Every denomination, every Catholic Every Protestant church, 501c3, doesn't matter. It's all in the family of Christ. We're all connected as one. Now let's go work together. Let's have a band. Let's, let me produce your band. I can make you sound genius. What? There's something wrong with me, something wrong with you. I don't want to talk about that. I want us to get together and have a have Thanksgiving. But no. We are hopelessly divided, folks. And the only one who can sort it out is Jesus. I don't want a lot of the things that are on my head, so I give them to you, Jesus, and I dive into the word. A friend told me the other day, well, maybe you'll escape in your studio. And that's, that's hard work, finishing up this album and making, making our, uh, you know, uh, debut out of the Zed Joss Studios. with something really beautiful. And, uh, but then, you know, I'm, I'm game to produce lots of different material, lots of different bands, lots of different talents. And... Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's hard work. It's a pleasure, though, you know. And I, so I just want to choose projects that are really, that the Lord really wants. You know what I mean? Be, you know what I'm saying? Not just any, not business. Not business. I want to use it for that. Oh, I'm sure that, you know, there'll, there'll be provision and all that. But I don't want to do it for money. You know, when I say producing, that means I've, uh, you know, band records and where it's recorded really doesn't matter. And then, you know, I get it and I'm, I end up mixing and adding and subtracting and more tracks and less tracks and more vocals and backing vocals. And I do all this stuff. And then, then they sound like a genius. <laughs> so you go, well, how can we perform that? It's like, you can't perform as good as I can, as I can produce you. 
but you could try. <laughs> you can rehearse a lot, practice a lot more. Or you could be like, you know, not, not produce so highly, you know, have less production so it's more like what you perform. But, um, and, I, and I love music, you know, I really do. And I think that's kind of a healer. That's something we have in common with everybody. Because you know what, at the end of the day, and I will say this, it's very positive. At the end of the day, we are all brothers, sisters, because we're humans on this earth contending with this choice. And we have this in common, that we struggle with this. All of us, let's face it, the elephant in the room is the spiritual battle and the choice whether you're going to bow down to Satan or, or take the Lord into persecution. It's one of the, and people try to go a tweeny in the middle. And then they end up hating it. Like, you hate me, Christian, in a church? You hate me? Well, then you have violated everything you've said. I certainly don't hate you. But you hate me, and you'd even like to kill me because I'm not like you. Well, that, how does that make you different or Christ-like at all? So you better check that. Where'd that spirit come from? You know, but I can go on and on. I know you won't leave. You won't leave. And you won't stay there and confront them either because you're scared. Because this supernatural crap, it gets into your home. It gets into your wife. It gets into your dog. It gets into your kids. You think I like to talk about that? You think I like to even know about how it gets in there and moves storms around and gets into people and causes people to commit suicide? All kinds of horrible things can happen when people don't go along and you want to be called saved. You want to be called saved. You want me especially, because Satan loves this. This is the trauma-based ritual abuse right here. You want me to go to your church and call you saved. Because that makes, because, oh, ooh, that's delicious. I feel that in my loins. No, I don't. I'm just, you know, I'm imitating them. That's, you know, you know what I mean? I, well, that's gross what I just said. It's like that. But that, can't you see it? Isn't that what happens? And no, I don't want to know about that either. I, I don't want to know about anything. I don't even want to do this. I just have to do it. I mean, I don't, it's not, but then who's me and who, what's want? What do I want? What do I, I don't even know I. What I, I, what's that? I have no I. So I just do it. But I don't necessarily like it. Here's what I'd like. I'd like a world where we're all kind of, you know, in this together and maybe there's a struggle, but we, you know, it's, it's what I thought it was a long time ago, which it isn't. I would love it to be like that. But it wouldn't answer the question of why am I here? And why are there wars? Why is there starvation? Why do people do things like that to people? There never will be a healing after this last election. All there's going to be is a separation between libs and conservatives and, and secession and a separation that, that people are going to look elsewhere, you know, like they did when they came here to this country originally. Then the people that wrecked it, they're going to be in charge and you know, it's theirs at this point. If it goes over the cliff further, like if it goes over the fiscal cliff, you know, I care. It's going to impact us all in a bad way, but, you know, I feel detached from it at this point. I don't care, really. You know, I'm not going to call my congressman. I just, I'm not going to get involved. Because the Lord said no more. That's it. He pulled me. That's it. No more involvement. So at least that, you know. So don't look to me. And please, please, those of you who listen to older podcasts who want to write me about politics and how I'm, you know, and do that, what you did, please don't bother because now there, I'm not, you know, I've talked about it a little bit today and all that, but I, there is no, I am a non-participant, want nothing to do with it, um, been moved out of that, don't talk about it. To me, both sides are corrupt. It doesn't matter. Coke or Pepsi, it just, you know, I don't, I, you know, 
I won't vote for any libertarian either. I don't want anything to do with any of this. It's just, I'm in the country of the Lord. I'm, in a, I'm a sovereign of God on no side. And I think I had to be, become that. You know, and I really got that. You know, I really got it deep in my guts that I'm on no side. You know, you can say, well, yeah, but you have conservative, uh, backwards ideas. And it's like, yeah, backwards. No, I have progressive ideas. But, and my progressive ideas is um, stop with the regulation, stop with the government being on everyone's back, you know, those kind of things so that people can do their whatever. But, uh, you know, this country voted for no freedom, and I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. I knew, you know what? We knew they'd do this, and we predicted it. I hoped over the last couple of years that there was a way to, to kind of turn it around. And, you know, you're never going to take out from me the idea that, uh, you know, being able to create wealth through creating a businesses, through ideas, innovation, you're never going to be able to tell me that sucks. You know, people are just naturally creative. You're never going to tell me that, you know, all that sucks. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep creating myself. You know, but it'll be in the realm of music and things like that. And I'm going to, you know want to put my time into good things that are good, that are going to be good, that are Lord-inspired. Lord and that's kind of where I'm at at this point. As far as the rest of it, look, you can figure out where politically it goes, and then economically it goes from the politics, and then from there you can figure out where the jobs are going to go and the taxes, and you can figure it all out. Tyranny, you know, you've America didn't have to live with that, but... We have, you know, the end of free speech as well. Lot, lack of a lot of freedoms. And for anyone to write me and tell me that those ideas are backwards, I've, I've, wow. All I can say is wow. Wow. The system did a great job. But it's over. And I'm not going to respond to any more talk about politics or whatever. You know, I'm not going to deal with that. Well, we have to find... I'd rather deal ge with geopolitical events and events to soon come. And what it means to be here and how the Lord will transform us into something different and also the idea of different dimensions and this coming thing from outer space, which is also going to be a big... It's going to take up a lot of people's consciousness. And the whole Antichrist thing is going to be tied in with this outer space, signs and wonders, uh, anti-ministry... And so those are the kind of things that also pitch us into thinking about eternity and those, those kind of things I want to talk about because it, even on the negative side, it gets us to think about the alternative. And, and I want to time it. I want to predict it. And it's going to come to pass. And when you see these things come to pass, you'll know that the end of this whole system is nigh. And we're hoping that there's hope for humanity and the human condition it's my sincere hope that every one of you on earth um, are taken by the Lord and, 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 get, and, and, and end up seeing a place to go in his goodness and his love and, and just get totally inspired by that rather than petty fights and wars and violence and terror attacks and all that. It's my great hope. But, you know, I hope that nothing bad ever happens to anybody. God help us. God help us all.